Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tibbet for Tuesday evening, September 4th. Just a quick update on Tropical Storm Gordon in the final hours before landfall here. Center just a couple dozen miles south of the Alabama coastline, moving toward the northwest, likely to make landfall somewhere near the far eastern Mississippi or west Alabama coastlines. And you can see lots of cloudiness and uh, heavy rain already spreading into portions of the Florida Panhandle and southern Alabama. This is the radar loop courtesy of Mark Nissenbaum at FSU, showing the center of circulation rotating counterclockwise clearly here and moving in the general northwestern direction likely to move into the coastline in just a matter of hours you can see some of the heaviest rain bands on the north and east sides already moving into mobile bay and portions of the northwestern florida panhandle and we are having winds pick up to over tropical storm force in some areas the eastern end of dauphin island here already has sustained winds at 45 miles per hour with gusts to 55 and these may come up even a little bit more there's a band of thunderstorms forming right on the north side here which may May have the strongest winds. Uh, currently, the National Hurricane Center estimates that uh, Gordon has winds up to 70 miles per hour at a maximum. We may or may not actually observe that maximum anywhere, uh, but certainly winds over 50, 60, maybe 70 miles per hour could occur in some spots along this coastline as these last couple strongest bands make their way on shore. And all of this rain on the north and east side will eventually rotate over into southern Mississippi and perhaps eastern Louisiana during the overnight hours. You can see the west side is pretty dry, so Louisiana not getting much here, uh, but we will see certainly a swath moving toward the northwest as the center begins to move inland. Uh, there won't be a lot of wind inland with this because it's not a large storm, so it is going to dissipate rather quickly as it moves inland. However, that doesn't mean the rain will disappear, and so we do have a strong swath of rainfall expected to move inland with the remnants of the storm into Mississippi, then Arkansas, and even farther beyond this. This is only a three-day forecast, and we could see all along this forecast track here heavy rain spreading up into the middle of the country and contributing to the potential for flooding in areas that get too much or where rivers are running high. Uh, so do be aware of that. We still have a hurricane warning for the Mississippi and Alabama coastlines and we will have winds that could maybe approach uh, hurricane force uh, but not likely to see a lot of that. Uh, winds will probably stay uh, around uh, the 60 or 70 mile per hour range at maximum. So that's about all there is to say about Gordon as landfall is imminent within the next few hours. Everyone do stay safe along the Gulf Coast states there. If we look at the rest of the basin, we do have one more storm to talk about. Hurricane Florence out comfortably in the middle of the ocean. No threat to any land areas at the moment. Uh, it has become a hurricane today despite a little bit of wind shear uh, coming out of the west. You can see the cirrus clouds on its west side here hitting a little bit of a wall. So there is a little bit of shear here and it's over fairly cool water. But despite that has become a hurricane, you can see a ragged eye has been forming periodically in the last few satellite images this evening. And the only reason we're really paying attention to Florence here is that in the longer term, it's possible that the storm, when it makes its way over to this part of the ocean by the weekend, if it's far enough south, it may take an extra step westward that could bring it into an area where it could threaten potentially the eastern United States or Bermuda. And this is something that's still quite far in the future, but it is something we're going to be just kind of watching for. This is the GFS model forecast out to day six on Monday. So already a pretty long range forecast and already rather uncertain because it's so far out. And this is where it has the hurricane by Monday. This is the 500 millibar map showing roughly the steering level that would be uh, guiding the hurricane. And what's important here is that uh, we need to know exactly where this hurricane is going to be in six days. That's hard to do. Uh, where it is here, especially uh, particularly what latitude it's at, how far north or south it is here, will probably determine whether or not it becomes a threat to any land areas because there are some complex competing steering features near the storm, uh, namely this trough that's expected to be to the north of the storm trying to drag it toward the northeast harmlessly out to sea but we also have some ridging off the eastern seaboard here to the northwest of the storm and that's trying to block the storm and force it more toward the west and potentially closer to North America. So we have two features trying to drag the storm in two different directions. Which way does it go? 
probably is determined mostly by uh, how far north the storm is here. If you put the storm more up here, it's much easier to get dragged northeast by the trough and out to sea. But if it's farther south like it is on this particular run, then it has a, a better chance of coming farther west. But there's a lot of uncertainty here, and I'm about to show you why. This is only one particular run of the GFS I'm showing you, but this model is run four times a day, and many other models are also run, and they're not the same. So if you look at this, the last few model runs valid all on Monday afternoon. I want you to watch this part of the basin here where the hurricane is and the features near it. Watch how different these runs are from each other. Here's the run before that one, the run before that, the run before that, the run before that, the run before that, and you can see how the hurricane is jumping around to different locations, and not only that, but the pattern, the steering features around the storm are also changing as we go back and forth in time. And so this is expressing the uncertainty we have. The computer doesn't really know for sure what's going to happen. If it did, when I flip back and forth, these runs would all look the same, but they don't because there's uncertainty. So we don't really know know yet where Florence will be and how the steering features near her will be interacting with the storm. And for that reason, it's not yet clear whether Florence will eventually become a threat. Even if the storm does, it's many days away. Remember, this is six days out, and even if it does come west after this point, it would be another few days before it was to threaten the United States. It would threaten Bermuda sooner than that, but still a week away. So when we're talking about a week to 10 days, a lot of time to watch this and it may never become a threat so we're just going to keep a wary eye on this we'll have to see in a few days what it's doing here and whether or not the computer models have settled on which direction it will go harmlessly out to sea or a little bit too close for comfort we'll have to see right now nothing is known for sure at all that's it for now i'll get you updated as time goes on